Hi guys, welcome to another video and this is for functional skills level one, another past paper. So this is past paper four. So on the front you should see these little asterisks um, and then it should say past paper four on the, on the front. Um, we're going to do section A first and then section B. If you haven't got these already, you should find them in Google Classroom if you're part of my class. If you're not part of my class, then you can download them from the link below. And what I'd recommend is do download them and print them out. Try them yourself first. Do time yourself when you do these. You know, give yourself 25 minutes for section A and I believe it's one hour 30 for section B. Do time yourself just like in a real exam and then go through this video step by step. Yeah, let's go through section A first. So this is obviously 25 minutes and let's go straight into number one. So question one says, Sue has a new job. She wants to compare the cost of traveling to work by train with the cost of traveling to work by car. Sue travels to work five days each week. She knows that it will be more expensive to travel to work by car. How much more expensive is traveling to work by car each week? So, first thing to notice, even though it says each week, you know, it's not going to be seven days. Um, so don't fall into that trap. You know, it's definitely five days per week. Yep. So she's only working five days in one week. So, so we've got the um, daily cost for the train and we need to work out the weekly cost here. So you can see this blank space here. There is a blank space here for the car as well for the daily cost, but we don't need that, do we? We're comparing these two. Can you see for the weekly cost? So let's do um, how much it costs for a train in one week. So that's going to be 1150. I'm going to have to multiply that by five. So again, without the uh, calculator, we're going to have to do it like this. So 1150 times by five. So zero times five is zero. Five times five is 25. So put the five down, carry the two. 1 times 5 is 5, plus the 2 is 7, and 1, five, one times 5 is 5. Um, how many decimal places has this got? This has got two decimal places altogether. This has got 0. So altogether, you've got two decimal places for your answer. So, uh, you know, again, it's not necessarily going to line up with that decimal point you know if you had another decimal point here then your decimal point would be would be here for example so uh, you know do always count how many decimal places your numbers your original numbers had and that'll tell you how many decimal places your your answer will have as well so that's 5750 and now we need to compare it with the 65 pounds and she did say it would be more expensive to work to uh, travel by work by car and, and it is you know it's 65 pounds but how much more expensive we need to work out the difference between 65 and 57.50 so we're gonna have to take away like this okay so zero take away zero is just zero zero take away five I can't do I'm gonna have to borrow that becomes a four and the one joins with that to make ten 10 take away 5 is 5. That's my decimal point. 4 take away 7 I can't do. I'm going to have to borrow from this. That becomes a 5. The one that joins with that to make 14. 14 take, take away 7 is 7. 5 take away 5 is just 0. Uh, so I'm going to just leave a blank space there. So that's going to be £7.15. There's your answer. So how much more expensive is it? £7.50 more expensive yep so you'll get one mark for this bit of working out here one mark for this bit of working out and you'll get one mark for your answer here obviously yep let's move on to question two question two use a common fraction to work out an estimate for 73 percent of 120 
you must show your working three marks. So, common fraction. Um, me personally, I would. Um, I would round this to 75%. Don't forget the keyword here is estimate. So we're not going to work out 73% of 120. That's not what it's asking for. They want you to use a fraction, a common fraction, to estimate your answer. So we're going to do, and what I'm going to do, 75%. Uh, which is the same as, hopefully you should know, it simplifies to three quarters. So if I do three quarters of 120, this, this will work, won't it? So um, you always divide by the denominator, multiply by the numerator. So 120 divided by 4 is 30 and 30 times by 3 is 90. Again, we haven't got a calculator, so you know, don't use any more complicated numbers. You know, you want to do it as, as easy as you can, you know, make your life a lot easier. You could have done 70%, but mm, I think it'll be a little bit more trickier. You know, you could have used 70% if, uh, if you wanted to. I have checked the mark scheme and it has got that as a solution as well. Me personally, I would have gone with with this one. So um, my answer is 90. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Question three, Evie needs to make 200 scones. Her recipe uses 150 milliliters of milk to make 10 scones. How many litres of milk does Evie need for 200 scones? Four marks. Oh, so, so we know that for 10 scones, um, uses 150 mils of milk. Okay, she wants 200. How do you get from this to this? How do you get from 10 to 200? Well, it's 20 times bigger, isn't it? Yeah, how many 10s go into 200 is 20. So I'm gonna have to multiply this by 20 as well, you know, for it to be proportional. So um, you should be able to work that out, but if, you're not, if you can't do that, you know, double it first, that's 300 and just add a zero on the end so it's 3000 milliliters um it's not a final answer don't forget you know they want your answer in liters and just highlight that so how do you change 3000 uh, milliliters to liters well again hopefully you should know one liter is a thousand milliliters we're going this way we're going from a thousand to one so you're going from a big number to small definitely divide by thousand so do the same for this how many thousands go into that it should be exactly three liters yep and there's your answer three liters you could have done it differently you could have worked out one scone if you wanted to and then times by 200 but, you know, you can go straight from 10 to 200 in one step, you know, just multiply by, by 20. Because it's proportional, you do the same to the other side as well. Yeah, uh, so it's a really good way of doing it. But, uh, the, yeah, there are many ways of doing this, however you did it. Again, just make your life easier, you know, just uh, what would you prefer? Not only easy, but quick as well. It has to be quick and easy. And look how many marks it is, four marks. So it's a lot of marks for one question. So, um, you know, definitely, I think this is a really good question. And hopefully you guys got the same. Question four, Fred makes solid pyramids. The, the height of each pyramid is nine centimeters. The base of each pyramid is in the shape of a square with side length six centimeters. Yep, that's that. But they're showing, so that's the base. 
Okay. Fred needs to know the volume of one pyramid. He uses this formula to work out the volume, which, you know, we've seen this kind of question before. It's like a what we call a function machine. Fred thinks that the volume of one pyramid is more than 100 centimeter cubed. Is Fred correct? Show why you think this. So, so the first step is we want the area of the base. Well, if that's the base, we're told it's a square. So if that's six centimeters, that must be six centimeters here as well. So area of the base is length times width, which is six times six, which hopefully you should know is 36 centimeters squared. You get one mark just for doing that. Then we have to follow the next step in the function machine. You have to multiply that by the height. What did they say the height was? Height is nine, right? So now we need to do 36 times by nine. We're gonna have to do it like this because uh, I don't know my 36 times table. So uh, let's do like this. Six times nine is 54. Put the four down, carry the five. Three nines are 27 plus the five is 32 yeah okay so that's 324 and then next in the function machine is you have to divide by three so again we're gonna have to do it ourselves without the calculator you're gonna have to do it like this in the bus stop method put 324 inside three on the outside how many threes go into three it's exactly one. How many threes going to two doesn't go? Carry on to the next one. How many threes going to 24? That's going to be exactly eight. So your volume is going to be 108. Fred thinks that the volume of the one pyramid is more than 100 centimeters. Yeah, he's right. Yep, yeah, so 108 is greater than hundred so yes he's correct yep you get four marks just for doing that so uh, you know do show all these steps this is how you're gonna get your four marks well you get three marks for the working the fourth mark is for saying yes um, but you know your working out has to be correct for uh, everything you know so yeah, just make sure you've got something similar to what I've just done that's section A done, and hopefully you got the same. Uh, that was out of 14 marks. I'm going to load up section B in a moment, so just give me two seconds. I'm going to show you on the screen. Yep, so this is section B, and this is what it should look like. Obviously, it should say on the front, 1 hour 30. And let's go straight into it. Question 1, Mia has a job interview at 9.20 a.m. When Mia wakes up, she will need one and three quarter hours to get ready, 25 minutes to walk to the interview. What is the latest time Mia needs to wake up? Three marks. So, um, yeah, something like this. Again, if you just put your answer, if you, if, you know, a lot of people do tend to work this in their head and just put their answer. You're not going to get three marks just for doing that. You need to show some kind of working out. And what I like to do is some kind of like timeline. So um, first of all, I'm going to change these to hours and minutes. So one and three quarter hours. That's the same as one hour, 45 minutes. OK, and I've got 25 minutes there as well. So all together. I've got. Um, if you add 15 to that, that's going to give you two hours uh, plus another 10 minutes. So two hours and 10 minutes. This is how long it's going to take her to get ready and to walk as well altogether. So we need to go backwards. If she needs to be there for 920. Let's put 920 a.m. here for our finish. We need to go backwards. So let's go back two hours. So I'm going to minus two hours. 
that's going to give me 7.20 a.m. Okay, and I need to take away another 10 minutes as well. Yep, so if I take away another 10 minutes, that's going to give me 7.10 a.m. So that's the latest time she can leave from her from a house yeah if she leaves any later than that then she will be late so definitely you have to mention 710 however you get your answer you don't have to do it like this by the way but it's a really good way of, of showing the examiner people who mark in it you know how you got your answer of 7 10 a.m so um you get three marks for doing something like this Question two, Jonathan is writing a report about recycling in the local town. In 2019, there were 2,170 people living in the town. Each person in the town recycled an average of 395.4 kilograms of waste. Jonathan knows that one ton equals a thousand kilograms. How many tons of waste were recycled in the town in total in 2019? Give your answer correct to two decimal places for three marks oh and there's a part b as well okay we'll come to that in a minute so don't forget you've got your calculator now and they're talking about average each person in town recycled an average so if each person in town recycled this much how many people were there 2170 each one of those recycled this much so you're gonna have to multiply by 395.4 let's do that on the calculator yeah so in total um in the whole town it's going to be eight five eight zero one eight yeah you should get this uh this big number on your calculator this is going to be in kilograms yeah because this was kilograms okay we want to change that to tons well if one ton equals a thousand kg we're going from kg to tons we're going this way so i'm going from a big number to small definitely divide by a thousand so I need to divide this by a thousand um, you could do it on the calculator or do it the quick way eight five eight and I know the decimal point is going to be here straight after that eight there and that's going to be in tons uh, give your answer to two decimal places. Okay, well, two decimal places. There's my decimal point. That's my first decimal place. That's my second. So this eight is going to decide what happens to the one. So because the eight is more than five, the one goes up to a two. That stays the same. Everything else stays the same. So it's eight, five, eight, point zero two tons yep you get three marks for doing that part b says use estimation to show check of your answer okay so keyword is estimation and you know when you show a check you have to um, ideally you have to work backwards so i'm going to start with let's call this um I'm going to call it 800 and 860 yep to the nearest 10 and working backwards instead of dividing by a thousand we're going to times instead yeah that's going to give me 860 and three more zeros and that's going to be in kg I'm going to go one step further because you know, in the original question, it's talking about either this many people or this much waste. So I'm going to 
have either one as one of these as my answer or pretty close to them you know you're not going to get exactly because you're estimating so i'm going to i'm going to use this again i'm going to round it to the nearest 10 to the nearest 10 would be 400 or to the nearest 100 because it's a big number and instead of multiplying i'm going to divide so i'm going to do eight six zero 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 divide by 400 yeah and it should roughly give me hopefully if i put, type in my calculator it should get roughly um, pretty close i should get pretty close to about 2170 let's double check so eight six zero 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 divided by 400 yeah i get two one five zero which is pretty close to this many people so you can say which is close to 2170 which is close to 2170 people yeah that's good enough so that's the idea behind behind showing a check i'm not sure if you guys know that but you know you can't just you don't just do the reverse calculation and that's it you know is the whole point of doing a reverse check is checking your answer checking whether your original numbers um do make sense so if your working makes sense you know if you go backwards and get the original numbers as your answer then yeah you've you've done it right so um that's the whole point of doing showing a check yeah you're supposed to show that you're you're working out does actually make sense well let's move on to the next one question three layla starts business making and selling scarves table shows information about the profit she makes in the first four months okay draw a graph for this information right so i would do yeah because it's talking about month one two three and four like this um if you if you can imagine i can't do i can't do a bar chart because a bar chart shows a range of values you know if i had if it said you know if it said january february march and so on then i could maybe do a bar chart yeah but because you've got numbers instead then i would i would plot the points they're going to go directly below these values and then you can draw a line graph yeah so definitely if you do a bar chart i think that'll be i think that'll be wrong so let's do this one. Oh, we need to do a, a scale as well so obviously they've started the scale for us already we just need to complete the rest so it's going up in 50s okay so that's that done and um and now we can plot our points obviously you guys use a pencil and ruler for this so the first one is 200 which is exactly there yep put a little cross or a little dot next one 180 well each one of these is going to be 10 isn't it so what each of these little squares so 180 is going to be two little squares below 200 uh, 220 is going to be two squares above 200 and 275 oh 275 is going to be halfway between 250 and 300 so exactly there yep and now you just plot these points and don't be tempted to start from zero zero again we don't know what this value is going to be at zero but we do know that one is here definitely so you start from the one and join these other ones i'm going to use my funny thing you guys use your pencil and ruler there you go so it should look something like this so yeah you just connect the dots or the crosses or whatever you use and it should look something like this you get two marks for that then it says layla gives 120 scarves to shop a to sell 152 scarves to shop b to sell shop a sold 15 percent of its 120 scarves 
Shop B sold an eighth of its 152 scarves. Which shop sells the most scarves? You must show your working. Um, yeah, it's part of the same question. This part is worth three marks. Um, right, so we need 15% of 120. So 15% of 120 this is for shop a by the way let's stick this in the uh, calculator so 15% of 120 that's 18 scarves okay and shop B, let's do that here. So I want an eighth of 152. So that's the same as 152 divided by eight. That's exactly 19 scarves. Yeah, and again, just use your calculator. Which one? Which one sells more? So obviously, 19 is more than 18. So shop b yeah just put that in your answer box yep for three marks obviously you'll get one mark for this bit of working out one mark for this bit of working out and one mark for your answer question four on monday selma has 202 pounds 69 pence in her bank account selma needs to pay a bill of 465 pounds 20 from the account on wednesday She'll pay some money into the account on Tuesday so that there is enough money in the account to pay the bill and £10 left in the account after the bill has been paid. No other payments occur. How much money does Selma pay into the account on Tuesday? Right. So if she pays out of her account, um, how much? She's going to pay out £465.20, but she wants to have £10 left in there there's so a couple of ways you can do this. You know, you could take these away and add £10. Or you can add the £10 first and then take away. It makes no difference how you do it. You know, you're still going to end up with um, £10 left in the account. So, I'll tell you what, let's do. 465.20. Take away 202.69. So, this will tell us how much more she needs to add. Um... And I tell you what, in fact, you know what, let's add the £10, might as well, because um, we need £10 in there. So, um, 465.20, take away 202.69, plus the £10, so that gives you 272.51. So she needs to add this amount to the account and you know you should get the answer yeah that is your answer so um how much money does some pay into the account 272 pounds 51 272.51 yeah and you can check your answer you can try it out you know if you add it onto the um original take away this you'll get 10 pounds left in the account yeah you can check it on your calculator it just takes two seconds to check see if it works and it does question five kelly is designing a pattern on on a grid pattern must cover all the grid use only black squares and white squares have exactly two lines of symmetry complete the pattern on the grid oh this is a bit of a weird question um for this one you know me personally uh because it's got two lines of symmetry you know let's make our life easier let's do one straight down the center and one going this way yep so there's my two lines of symmetry so they've already done this quadrant down here can you see in this this corner they've already done that for you so me personally why don't we just copy that so 
shade in the ones that you want in black so the, all of these all of these these yep there's my um, there's my line of there's my line of symmetry so that's on that side and then this one's going to be on this side yep same thing again these are going to be reflected in the um, horizontal mirror line so you've got these and don't forget you know I should do this with a um, definitely shade these in with a pencil obviously I'm using my funny little pen here there you go and you can see it's completely symmetrical yeah with two lines of symmetry that's the same as that same as that same as that yep and you can fill in this one as well if you want you to like make it complete complete um it'll be look like a like a cross shape won't it you know you can do that i'm going to leave it like that i think there are quite a few solutions for this by the way as long as it meets these conditions it has to have two lines of symmetry and you need to have black and white squares in there you can't cover the whole thing in black by the way yeah so um yeah that's uh that's one possible solution no, don't spend ages on something like this it's only two marks maximum you should spend is two minutes on this yeah, i'm just tidying it up a little bit there you go yeah that's absolutely fine Part B says, which one of these nets will make a cube? Yep, again, hopefully you should know what net means. So if you have like a cardboard box and you open it up and flatten it out, what would it look like, you know, when it's flattened out? So definitely, if you can imagine, this one here is the only one that makes a cube. Yep, there's only one answer. Don't forget, there's only, there's only one because it says which one of these nets definitely this one if, if you can imagine it folding it in on itself it will look like a cube yeah so it's that one question six Carl is running a charity race here's a map for part of the route so you've got start here and you've got drink stop Carl wants to know the bearing of the route find the bearing of the drink stop from the start for one mark so um, <clears throat> hopefully you should know bearings is to do with obviously angles you'll notice it says here diagram drawn accurately so whenever it says this you know you have to measure directly onto this uh, page or on this on this diagram that they've they've given so obviously for bearings you need to um, use your protractor um, I'm going to put my protractor on the screen. So if you give you give me a minute, I'll just do that. Yep. So here's my protractor. Obviously, you guys should have the uh, real version, not the uh, fake one that I've got. Um, what you need to do is measure the angle, and you always go clockwise from the north position. So we're starting from here. This is the angle they're after. This one here, if you can see, with my uh, pointer. So I need to put my protractor on its side. Like this. And carefully place it. Can you see where this little cross is here in the middle? I need to put that right in the corner. Um, it's a bit fiddly with this. but Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, let me just zoom in show you guys yep so i'm fairly happy with that so um as you can see the zero is on the north line can you see that there so that's resting on there the little cross where the start is where it said start that's right where the um the center of my protractor is so there's the 90 degree angle there's 90 degrees zero is here there's the line, can you see the dark line from 
from the start to the drinks stop so we just have to measure this angle here and as you'll notice because you're starting at zero you go all the way around to 70 just after 75 so i'd say 76 for that definitely 76 degrees let me just zoom out definitely 76 degrees for that and to write it as a bearing let me just uh, delete my uh, protractor in fact i'll leave it on there i'll leave my protractor on there just to uh, show you guys how i got my answer um my answer is going to be um you have to write it in three with three figures for a bearing so i can't just put 76 on its own if it's three figures then you have to put zero at the front as well so it's going to be 076 degrees yeah, and that's your answer for that one. So uh, I'll highlight which angle we're looking at. This angle right here. Yeah, from there to there. Carl is running the race as part of a team. Table shows the running times for all the team members. Work out the range, right? So range, hopefully you should know. Range is biggest takeaway smallest so which one's the biggest one 53 take away 38 what does that equal that's gonna be 15 is that yep 15 so it should be 15 minutes just double check with your calculator if you're not sure so you get one mark for your working out this bit here you get one mark and obviously one mark for your answer and it says the same team ran the race last year the mean running time for the runners in the team last year was 45 minutes Carl thinks that the mean running time for the runners in the team this year is less than 45 minutes is Carl correct so again talking about mean um right so these are the uh, running times. Um, right, so we have to compare this year's with last year's, right? So let's do mean for this year. Mean is, and if you don't know, add them up. Divide by how many you've got. Yep, so that's going to be, let me just uh, have a look at the table, 47, 42, and 38. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. Let's do that in the calculator. So our total is 220. And we need to divide that by five. That's exactly 44. Right, so that's the mean this year. Uh, the mean time last year was 45 minutes so Carl thinks that the mean time for the runners in the team this year is less than 45 is Carl correct so yes so 44 is less than 45 so yes yep there's your three marks for that question seven Jasmine has an allotment the allotment is in the shape of a rectangle Okay, Jasmine wants to put a fence around the edge of the allotment. There needs to be a gap in the fencing of 1.5 metres for a gate. Fencing is sold in whole metres. Work out the length of the fencing Jasmine needs to buy. Three marks. Right, so hopefully you should realise um, it's not going to be to do with area. This one is definitely to do with perimeter because it's talking about around the edge. So this fencing is going to go around this shape definitely to do with perimeter so um, I'll tell you what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up all the sides first and then take away 
this gap of 1.5 so if this is 15.75 that's going to be 15.75 as well and this is going to be 6.2 on that side so total perimeter equals 15.75 plus 6.2 plus another 15.75 plus another 6.2 yep or you could have doubled it <clears throat> yeah add these add these two together and double your answer in fact that's what I'm going to do on the calculator times by two um, we get 43.9 that's going to be in meters yeah and then I'm going to take away the gap for the gates which is 1.5 so 43.9 take away 1.5 that's going to give me 42.4 meters so this is what we need this is the uh, amount of fencing we need in meters yeah um, fencing is sold in whole meters so Work out the length of fencing, Jasmine will need to buy right. Okay. So um, 42 is not going to be enough. Think of it as 42 and a bit. And you can't round it down either because you're going to need a bit of fencing for that as well. So, um, you know, imagine if you're going to shop and buy this fencing, you're buying it in whole meters. This bit is, this, this sentence is very important. So, um, 43 meters of fencing is needed yeah and there's your answer in whole meters yep three marks for that let's move on to the next one question eight sam is planning a new kitchen he has this diagram of one of the walls one centimeter on the diagram represents 40 centimeters on the wall. Right, okay. Diagram shows the space of a kitchen. Sammy has these fridges to choose from. Uh, Sammy wants to buy the largest fridge, fridge possible to fit in the space. Which fridge should sh should Sammy choose? Show why you think it's right. So imagine you're looking at the directly at the wall. This is where the fridge is going to go. Yeah. Um, again, notice it says diagram drawn accurately. You've got a key as well, so you have to measure this with a ruler, this space here, from here to here and from here to here. Yep, you need the, 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 uh, the height and the width of the fridge um, and then change it to however many centimetres it will be on the wall. So um, I'm going to use my ruler, you guys do the same. Actually, I've noticed that, you know, when you print this out, it does shrink it a little bit. So um, the real one will be will be accurate. I will measure it myself and let you know what the actual measurements should be. So if you give me a minute, I'll do that right now. OK, so I've put some rulers on the page. So as you can see on the screen, um, I've got a ruler going this way for the height which you can see is approximately 4.5 centimeters and for the width it looks like it's exactly two centimeters so let's make a note of this so height is 4.5 and the width exactly two centimeters that's on the uh, on the page what would it be in real life well in real life it says um, sorry on the key it says one centimeter on the diagram represents 40 centimeters on the wall so your scale for every centimeters represents 40 cent centimeters in real life yep so one centimeter is on the map or the diagram 40 centimeters in real life so you need to multiply both of these by 40 to get what your space will be in real life. So 4.5 times 40, that's 180. 
and 2 times 40 is 80 centimeters for the width. So this is the space that you've got. Um, Samir, Samir wants to buy the largest fridge possible to fit in this. Right, okay, well, the largest one. Which fridge should he choose? The largest one is, uh, well, this is not going to fit. Yep, so A is definitely gonna f not going to fit because that's that's uh, more than 180. Uh, B could fit. Yep, well, let's check the next ones. C, yeah, C could fit, in fact, and C is a little bit bigger than B. D, D is not going to fit because the width is too much. That's gone, mm, that's more than 80. So definitely C is the one you should choose. That's the biggest one that can fit. Question nine, Rita wants to buy an oak shelf from a shop. Normal price of the shelf is 170 pounds. Shop has this offer, 45% off the normal price. Rita will use this offer. She has a budget of 100 pounds to buy the shelf. Can Rita buy the shelf for three marks? So yeah, if it's 170 pounds, uh, for the normal price, we want to do 45% of the price. Let's do that first. Let's do that in the calculator. And you should get 76.5 on the calculator. In pounds, that's going to be £76.50. This represents the discount. Yep, <clears throat> I think it's always a good idea to write what you've actually got here, just to remind yourself. You know, this is not the uh, final answer because it's forty-five percent off. This is the uh, forty-five percent that you've just worked out, so you need to uh, take it away from the original. So one hundred and seventy minus that. Let's double check. It's ninety-three pounds fifty. So, yeah, don't forget the zero. Um, so that's the price of the what? Are these, what is she buying? Oak shelf. Uh, Rita will buy. Rita will use this offer. She has a budget of hundred pounds. Can she buy? It? Yes, she can. Yeah, because ninety-three is less than hundred pounds. Yep, yeah, there you go. Part B says, use a reverse method to show a check of your answer. So we have to work backwards. I'm going to start with this. And then I'm going to try and get this. And eventually I want to show the uh, 45 as well, 45%. So um, let's start off with 9350 first. And I'm going to use the 170, so I need to. Uh, um, I need to take it away from 170. So you can't do this take away 170. I'm going to have to do it the other way around. So in fact, let's do 170 minus 9350. That gives me the 7650. Yep, the discount. Okay, and now I'm going to use that to work backwards again a little bit. I'm going to divide by 170. So, and multiply by 100. No, in fact, let's just do this. Let's just do that. This should give me 0 0.45, hopefully. Let's just double check. 76.5 divided by 170. Yeah, and if you press SD, it gives me that. That's absolutely fine. As long as you show something to do with 45%, which is the same as 0 0.45. Yeah. That's the same as that. Then, you know, that's the original percentage that they were talking about. So that's what you're trying to show here. Yeah, so you have to work backwards all the way back for this one. You do need to show the discount that you get and the 45% uh, 
um, in this case, you know, to get the uh, reverse method to show a check. Um, me personally, I would I would do it this way. Um, and if you check the mark scheme as well, it's very similar to this as well. Question 10, Tom rolls an ordinary fair dice. Part A says, mark with a cross on the scale, the probability that Tom rolls an even number. Well, an even number, even number is um, two, four, six. So you got three out of six, which simplifies to a half. Um, or you can leave it as three out of six if you wanted to. That's one sixth, two sixths, three sixths here, four sixths, five sixths, and six out of six. So you should know, hopefully, that's half, halfway. One mark for that. And it says, Tom has a fair dice with 12 faces of equal size. There is one number of each face. Numbers are 1 to 12. Tom rolls the dice and looks at the number on the top face. What is the probability that this number is more than 5? Well, more than 5. So uh, that's going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's seven out of 12. Yep, there's your answer. Seven out of 12. So don't assume it's just gonna be half. <clears throat> you know, you do have to, uh, I think it's a good idea to just list out all the numbers it's talking about. So more than five, you can't include five, obviously. It has to be more than five. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of a total of 12, you get two marks for doing that. Last one, question 11. Georgia is the office manager. The office floor is in the shape of a rectangle. Diagram shows the floor space of the office. Okay. Total of 65 people work in the office. Each person needs at least four meters squared of floor space to work in. Georgia wants to increase the number of people working in the office by 20%. She thinks that each person will still have at least four meters squared of floor space to work in. Is Georgia correct? Show why you think this. Five marks for this. So hopefully you've noticed. Talking about meters squared, so it's to do with area. So let's work out the area of the floor space. Let's do that first. Area of floor is length times width, which is 15.5 times 21. Okay, let's do that on the uh, calculator. 15.5 times 21. As a decimal, it's 325.5 meters squared. Okay, yeah, one mark just for doing that. Um, she wants to increase the number of people working in the office. Okay, well, 65 people to begin with. So we want to increase that by 20%. So let's do 20% increase of the people is 20% of 65. And let's do that on the calculator, 20%. That's uh, 13 people. So uh, if it's an increase, we need to add that on to the original. So now we've got 78 people. Yep, these 78 people are going to share the area. The area doesn't change, obviously. The area is going to be the same. So how much area does each person get? Well, we need to see how many 78s go into that. So for each person, three hundred twenty-five point five divided by seventy-eight. Could have done it differently. You know, this is one way of doing it. There are other ways. Me personally, I would have done it this way. And divide that by seventy-eight. So each person will get four 
point one seven and it goes on meters squared yep so it's definitely more than four meters um, she thinks that each person will still have at least four meters squared to work in is George correct yes there's your answer yeah five marks just for doing that that's pretty good yeah they do give you again they give you loads of space um, uh, you didn't we didn't need it but yeah that's that's one way of doing it you could have done it other ways you know you could have um, maybe worked out four times the uh, number of people so four times 78 and compare it with the area see if that works and I'm sure it would yeah there are many ways of doing this one again check the mark scheme and there are quite a few solutions for this so hopefully you know you've got it one of those ways uh, that was the last question so hopefully you found that useful and uh, if you did you know do press the like button and do uh, do subscribe to my channel hopefully you guys have subscribed now uh, to my channel if you haven't do press the subscribe button please if you have any suggestions for any more videos in future do leave me a comment but uh, yeah I hope you found that useful and uh, I shall see you in the next video